Today, FDA approvals in lung cancer, urothelial carcinoma, and breast cancer, disappointing findings in a bladder cancer study, a death reported in a CAR T-cell therapy trial, and encouraging results in a melanoma study. Welcome to Enclave News Network, I'm Gina Columbus. The FDA granted an accelerated approval to pembrolizumab for use in combination with pemetrexid plus carboplatin as a frontline treatment for patients with metastatic or advanced non-squamous non-small cell lung cancer regardless of pdl one expression. The approval was based on part two of cohort G in the Keynote 021 trial in which the pembrolizumab triplet demonstrated an objective response rate of 55% versus 29% with the chemotherapy agents alone. The median progression-free survival was 13.0 months with the addition of pembrolizumab versus 8.9 months for chemotherapy alone. The accelerated approval is contingent on the results of a confirmatory trial. In urothelial carcinoma, the FDA granted an accelerated approval to the PD-L1 inhibitor of Velumab for the treatment of patients with locally advanced or metastatic disease that has progressed during or following platinum-containing chemotherapy or within 12 months of neoadjuvant or adjuvant platinum-containing chemotherapy. The approval was based on data from the urothelial carcinoma cohorts of the single-arm open-labeled Javelin solid tumor trial. Here, the overall response rate was 13.3% among 226 patients who had been followed for at least 13 weeks and was 16.1% among 161 patients who had been followed for at least six months. In the more than six month follow-up cohort, the 26 responses included nine complete responses and 17 partial responses. In the more than 13 weeks follow-up group, the 30 responses included nine CRs and 21 PRs. The accelerated approval of Avelumab for this indication is contingent on results from a confirmatory trial. Co-packaging of the oral medications ribocyclib and letrozole have been approved by the FDA for the treatment of postmenopausal women with HR-positive HER2-negative advanced breast cancer. With the new Kiskali Femera Co-Pack, patients can obtain a full 28-day cycle of the two medicines in one package with one prescription and one copay, and the cost will be the same as that for Kiskali alone. The statement was made by Novartis, which manufactures both medications. The company noted that ribocyclib, which helps to slow cancer progression by inhibiting the CDK4 and 6 proteins, can continue to be prescribed separately, along with another aromatase inhibitor. Ribocyclib was approved by the FDA in March 2017 for use in combination with an AI for this population of women. The PD-L1 inhibitor tezolizumab missed the Phase 3 IM Vigor 211 trial's primary endpoint of improving overall survival in the second-line setting for patients with locally advanced or metastatic urothelial carcinoma. The trial was intended to confirm the findings in the Phase 2 IM Vigor 210 study, on which the FDA based its May 2016 accelerated approval of atezolizumab as a treatment for patients with locally advanced or metastatic urothelial carcinoma whose disease progressed during or after platinum-based chemotherapy or within 12 months of receiving platinum-containing chemotherapy, either before or after surgery. Just last month, atezolizumab received a second accelerated approval in bladder cancer, this time as a frontline treatment for cisplatin ineligible patients with locally advanced or metastatic urothelial carcinoma. This most recent indication was based on a different cohort from the IM Vigor 210 study than the initial second-line approval. The disappointing news of the Phase 3 IM Vigor 211 findings comes amid second-line bladder cancer approvals this month of two other PD-L1 inhibitors, Avelumab and Ervalumab. The first cerebral edema death in the Zuma-1 chimeric antigen receptor T-cell therapy trial was disclosed by Kite Pharma, the manufacturer of the treatment. The information was given on a conference call with investors announcing the company's first quarter financial results. The patient was participating in a safety expansion of the Phase II Zuma-1 study of the anti-CD19 CAR T-cell therapy axicabtagene cellulosal, also known as KITE-C19. The trial is evaluating the therapy for patients with relapsed or refractory aggressive non-Hodgkin lymphoma who are ineligible for transplant. The company completed enrollment of 30 U.S. patients last month, in which two patients experienced grade 3 cytokine release syndrome. 
Kite said that one of those patients also experienced multi-organ failure and a neurologic event that progressed to a fatal cerebral edema that investigators determined was related to Kite C19. Kite said that this patient had shown inadequate responses to both first and second line therapies and had rapidly progressive and symptomatic disease at enrollment. This is the third death attributed to Kite C19 treatment in Zuma 1. The company previously disclosed fatal incidents of hemophagocytic lymphohistiocytosis and cardiac arrest in the setting of CRS. A fourth death from pulmonary embolism was not related to treatment. Kite applied for a biologics license application for Kite C19 in March 2017, based on preliminary results from Zuma 1. It was expected at the time that the FDA would give the application priority review and make a ruling four months earlier than with a standard review. Kite announced that at the time that it planned to launch later this year, and Kite President and CEO Dr. Ari Bell de Grun said that the timeline had not changed. In melanoma, the combination of the BRAF inhibitor and carafenib and the MEK inhibitor, binimetinib, reduced the risk of disease progression or death by 23% versus single-agent encarafenib for patients with BRAF mutant melanoma. The findings are from part two of the phase three Columbus trial, in which the median progression-free survival for patients treated with the combination was 12.9 months compared with 9.2 months for patients receiving encarafenib alone. Based on these data, along with previously reported findings from part one of the Columbus trial, the developer of the combination, Array Biopharma, anticipates filing a new drug application with the FDA in June or July of this year. This week, we also sat down with Dr. Mark Tuzinski of Florida Cancer Institute to discuss exciting advancements in the field of lung cancer. To me, the two hottest topics right now in lung cancer are how will we continue to advance the use of immunotherapy, whether it's in combination with chemotherapy, as we saw from the Keynote 21G cohort, whether it's immunocombos, uh, combining it with the CTLA-4 drugs, um, and a, a number of the new targets, OX40, um, TIM3, uh, LAG, and all these other antibodies that are out there in phase one studies, how are they gonna tr contribute to the gains that we've seen with immunotherapy? The other um, area of a hot topic is the increasing number of approval of TKIs. Uh, last week, we had the approval of brigatinib in ALK-positive uh, non-small cell lung cancers. So this is really the fourth TKI. Uh, how are we gonna use all these sorts of things and how do we uh, get you know, the best drug to the, to the right patient at the right time? I think these are all kind of hot topics at this point. That's all for today. Thank you for watching on Clive News Network. I'm Gina Columbus.